Hello and welcome to part three of this three part video series. In part one, you learn about Tiger Zone One. In part two, we learn how we applied it. In part three, I'm going to answer some questions. Right, so do you think this is a setup one? I mean, I think it is. How did you feel, you know, when, when, when you saw this breaking out? Because I heard you say something while well, recording was off. I thought because the candle exited the box, the grey yeah, box. It broke the box. Yeah, it broke the box. So you felt box. excited? Yeah, I thought maybe this is a setup one, wave five. Yeah, and did you think, did you like think into the future, think, oh, it's going down? Should I get yeah. in? Yeah, I did. That's why I said, oh, should I get it? Right. And then it went, went straight back up. And now, now it's going up, so now it's clear your emotions are, are changing. But the problem is, do you think it's a setup one? Uh, no. But at that no. time, you felt like you should yeah. be in the trade. Yeah. I didn't see the previous market. See, that's, that, that's, that's the typical thing. So the problems of M1 trading is that uh, it, it has this issue of impulsive trading. You look at the market, the market's moving and you want to get in. And at that point, you forget that you are not trading the moves of the market haphazardly. You yeah. are following a strategy, you're following a certain pattern. And that pattern is yeah. setup one. And yeah. to create a setup one, you have a set of rules that you have to follow. Yeah. And the rules have been laid out in our system. Let me just uh, bring it. Just to show you, I don't know. Yeah. So you have just got into the forum. And so we have one topic that says how to use the flow chart to create the setup one. And we have that signal. Uh, I'm showing the inside of uh, what I shouldn't be showing, but it is there. Um, this is the flow chart. And I know you can't see it because, yeah, uh, yeah, but the, they can the see video. it on the video. Is that yeah. there are um, two ways of creating a setup one, and then after you do that, you go to the next video, which is what is setup zero, one, and two. What is the difference between this? This is a this is my beloved video that I would want you to watch. Uh, then you would get the answer to the question that you asked me earlier. So let me just go back to your chart. Now, the reason this is not a setup one is that it does not conform to those rules uh, based on the flowchart. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you have access to the flowchart because I'm teaching you in a different way. I'm not. You're not going into the forum and stuff. I'm actually... Uh, teaching you, f you know, in a faster way. Yeah. Like I take live classes with you. Like today we did we did this on Target Zone One. So the technique is different now. What I what I'll show you now is when you, because you verbally understand the the rules, right? Yeah. Um, you can see here. Oh, those were some trades from the other day. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. We took this trade, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. While I was teaching you. So, let me just go to M1 then. Oh, yeah. And we had feed issues, so it didn't hit the target point. I mean, it did hit the target point, but there was lag issue because the area where you in internet is not that good, right? So, yeah. it... I mean, it's generally good, but it's just on that time, it was just a bit of a problem. Otherwise, it this trade hit plus 10, plus 14, which is more than enough on, you know, uh, on an M1 chart. So we took the trade around here, exited there. We took this trade based on what I thought was a, an Apple signal, which is not displayed here, but it was on my screen. Uh, you don't have the Apple because you only have the stage one setup one indicators. And then we added on here 
and then we had the target point down there, which is just above target zone one, the web expansion 62. So this was one of a very good lesson. So the way I'm teaching you is cutting all the, uh, you know, the reading and all that stuff and just taking you straight to the, uh, you know, on battle. So yeah. what I want you to just wait for a uh, peak three like this and then wait for the cross of zero and wait for the red dot put your pending order here and target point at target zone one so there are three things about target zone one that you need to know where to start where to have this bit so where to start where and identify the peak of three and identify the peak of four mm -hmm. so those are done very easily so wherever you have this peak corresponding to this wherever the price has the lowest point for sell orders yeah. and then whenever you have this green peak against this you want to have the corresponding highest. So when price was coming down, what is the lowest point of the price? And when price was retracing back up, what is the highest point between Gator and the purple? Mm -hmm. So identify that and that's where you start. This is where you peak it and there, this is where you adjust the second leg of the flu expansion. It will give you this. And then you put your target point slightly above it. Now in this occasion, it was a perfect execution. We had plus 10, plus 14. Uh, on this now if we go to today's chart now and then you apply those concepts where is my three and four mm -hmm. so now here is the point this is the answer to your question when you said oh interesting it's breaking out yes it was and I know it looks very ugly now <laughs> but yeah, at that time it looked very exciting right yeah your question would have been where is my target zone? Right? Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. yeah, it's moving, but where is my target zone? And you'd say, uh, um, but, oh. Yeah. Uh, where do I draw target zone from? I don't really have a clear peak on the AO. In fact, I have a clear peak up, followed by some mumble jumble stuff. Yeah. Now, I'm bringing you now to the third most important point. Whenever you take a setup, right? Whenever mm -hmm. you take a setup, you don't want purple to be inside that box. M oh, you right. don't want purple to be mingled with the gator. Okay. So purple should either be up or down. Purple should up, up. be exactly the way... Purple should be like this. This is what it is. Yeah. I find it so easy, you know, teaching on live videos like this. It's it's so much easier. You, you, you learn quick, you know. If you put this in books and reading and all that, it takes, it is still very good, but it takes a long time. If you look at this, because it's a picture, let's just talk about the picture. So here you have a three up, right? Yeah. The gate is open, box is stepping up, price went up, you have peaks on AO, and then price starts to come back. See that gator face here? And then it mm -hmm. closes its mouth. Mm. Gator is like, mm, over here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Over here, Gator's like, ah, I'm hungry. So it comes down. The box is tight. Look where the purple is. Purple yeah. purple is like a cloud right it's on the other end, right? It, it's yeah. completely away from the Gator, and it's kind of just trailing it. And price comes to the purple, and let me tell you something so interesting. Up. Purple, even though it's a moving average, in most cases, it indicates 50% pullback. The Fib retracement 50%. Let me show you this. I have not checked this chart. So at any given point, like if it, when the market was here, mm -hmm. and purple was, and because it's 21, and purple would have been here. Can you see this? Yeah. This is 21 points. Purple is shifted 21 candles into the future. So when the market was here at the peak, purple was suggesting to you that if it started to retrace, yeah. it's, and it comes to purple line, that will be between 50 to 38% pullback. And can you see what happened? Yeah. I had never checked this chart before, right? It's, it's today. Yeah, I I'd, I'd not checked this chart before. I'm just, 
you know, impromptu, as they say. <laughs> Just, I don't know what the word is, but it sounds like that. Um, so purple always indicates 50% pullback. So we don't need to have these tools on our screen all the time. As soon as purple is there and you have a peak of wave three, at this point, purple would have been shown here. And you know what purple was telling you? It was saying that if there was a wave four to begin at this point, well in advance, right? Mm -hmm. It would come and end here, right next to me. And that's where it ended. Can you see it? Yes. So this would be your peak of wave four. So what you'll do is you'll put your target zone one from there. And it's just spot on there. And look, look where it did. It hit target zone one. Which it did. It did. So when the market was breaking out here, you should have already be following this market from this point onward. Mm -hmm. And this is the way to follow the market. You look at the market when it's making this peak, you want to wait through this wave four. If you're on M1, this is just about 15, 20 minutes of wait. And you look at it and can you see this candle? This candle has an attitude. This mm -hmm. candle has an attitude. It's got a lot more information than these candles. These candles yeah. are like nothing, 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 nothing. Then comes down, hits these levels to the left, touches the purple almost. In Forex world, it should be considered as the touch, even though it's like a pip away. But that's what it is. It's kind of like zone. It's fuzzy logic. And, yeah. and then there's a sudden burst of buying. This candle engulfs all the candles to the left, all the way till here. So this is giving, the market is giving, showing its hand showing, okay, buy orders are coming. And then the next candle is blue dot and you have the, the box. You, you put your pending order there and you have your stop loss here and your target point is at target zone one and it's hit it. I know when you got in, it gave you a little bit of the fears to say, oh, it's going towards my stop loss. That's what trading is. You had to let it be. You know, you'd say, if it hits my target point, let it be. Yeah. But if you did that, you succeeded and it hit your target point up there. Yeah. Let me just draw it again. Lose, lose small and win big. Oh yeah, asymmetric risk reward is the key. You will lose. And so what you want to make sure is that when you lose, you lose one unit. When you make, yeah. you make two, three, four, and five units. And that's the yeah. secret to success. I'm going to end this video now. Well, well thank you for the question. After the video, Aslan called me again and uh, he sent me WhatsApp messages saying that he restored his money. Obviously, it was the account was less than 10K. So when he started, it was at 9,800 because of the reversal trades. And then he started trading setup one. I only taught him yesterday what to do to trade setup one. And now he's all excited. And um, obviously, because this is a great method, he says, learning from you is such an amazing way of learning. I'm a noob and I can actually understand for the first time of what is happening on the MT4. Because obviously he's a noob. So when he started trading, he simply uh, just installed the indicators, not the indicators, he installed MT4 and he just started going long and short and all that. And then he asked me what he should do. And I said, well, I'm going to teach you setup one and it will change everything. And I have no doubt that if he follows setup one, he's only going to do one thing, grow his account. So please like and share this video. Uh, leave your comments, please. And uh, do subscribe to the channel. So if there's any new video, you'll get notified. There's this um, I've learned that there's little um, bell icon. If you click on that, then you get a notification every time there's a new video. So see you in the next video.